Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here um, in such a great number on a Sunday. Uh, my name is Anastasia Shagidulin, and I'm the artistic director of Cercle Cité. We are extremely happy that we had the chance uh, to be invited uh, by Caroline von Reden and the whole team of the Art Week to uh, present a talk, to do a talk uh, today in the framework of our current exhibition, Hors d'oeuvre. It's an exhibition about food and art, but uh, we decided to take the opportunity uh, of this talk to speak about uh, something a little bit greater <laughs> and something a little bit more important, which is the exchange uh, in, in our greater region in Europe and uh, more specifically also uh, about Luxembourg as a cultural destination and Luxembourg as a cultural and artistic context. So uh, for that, uh, for our talk, uh, Center Periphery Proximity, uh, we invited Beate Fischer, who is a Dutch artist that is currently exhibiting in Hors d'Oeuvre at Cercle Cité. Uh, we invited, of course, Caroline von Reden to speak about her vision of Luxembourg as a cultural destination and also uh, the outlook for the future and Laura Boxberg, who is the director of the Finnish Cultural Institute for the Benelux. So there we really have a, a discussion about, um, yeah, about uh, geography and about uh, networking and uh, cultural exchange. So um, why speaking today about center periphery? Um, I think for me, coming back from, uh, from having lived internationally in different European countries, coming back to Luxembourg uh, two years ago, I, I discovered a concept which I found very interesting. It is how small we are and that that's actually uh, really an asset. So the concept of proximity and the exchange that happens, people like artists, for example, uh, currently exhibiting at Cercle Cité, we have artists that are Dutch, but that live in Berlin. And we have other artists that are French, but they, they live in Brussels. And uh, we have Luxembourgish artists that consider themselves Luxembourgish, but spend most of their time in Paris. So in a, in a, in a way, I, uh, I really found myself in a, in a scene that that seems more like uh, like no like there is no separation between the countries, but that we are actually living in one big country, uh, and actually on a global scale, you could say that uh, yeah, geographically speaking, we could also all be just one one region and one scene. So um, that was what I found very interesting. Also, not only geographically but also culturally, we have. I guess even with Finland, <laughs> more similarities than differences. And um, talking more a bit maybe about the idea of center periphery, um, we in the last 10 years, one could say, experience also on a global scale a shift. So the shift was very visible at the, document at the last two documentas. So the f uh, documenta 14 was focusing on the south uh, and uh, so, so getting away a little bit from the Western canon. Um, and please interrupt me or uh, speak if you, if you have something to say to these topics. Um, so there was a really a shift away from uh, the Western canon looking into the more Southern regions. Then I guess with uh, the last document of 15, we, uh, f like the focus was on looking at um, different pr communal practices, but also more in Asia and more in different parts of the world. Coming back to the, to the European perspective, one could say that uh, a lot of smaller cities, smaller, like more peripheral uh, regions uh, understood that uh, investing into being a cultural destination and investing into putting your little city, your little town on the map brings a lot of economical benefits. And I think that's something that one could also see in Luxembourg specifically. I think the Ministry of Culture did a great job over the past years really endorsing, uh, endorsing artists to come back, to not stay in Brussels, to not stay in Paris, but to really become Luxembourgish artists, come back, have a practice here. 
because again, economical benefits. So it's, uh, it's, it's really uh, a global shift that one can experience. And I think Luxembourg is really at the moment in this, um, in this process of transforming itself from a cultural periphery to maybe one day really a cultural center. So that's why I, I think it's really, I, I'm really curious what uh, Laura Boxberg has to say about her experience of the Benelux, because uh, of course, this is your area where you're working. Of course, I'm really curious about what uh, Caroline will have to say uh, in a few minutes. And uh, what is also interesting, and I think I, I would like to start with you, Bea, um, because you are operating in the cultural and the art field here in Europe, here in the Benelux, and, and more specifically in the Netherlands, uh, since many, many years. I'm really curious to hear how you have, uh, how your practice has evolved, and how you experience working as an artist in our region. So, um, yeah, maybe you could start by introducing yourself. Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Hi, hi, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm from, the, I'm from the Netherlands. I started as a painter, uh, then I became a uh, sound designer, uh, electroacoustical sound. I studied in the conservatory, then I became a dancer, I had a dance company. And then, uh, actually, <laughs> actually, I went into cinema, so now I'm making films, mostly films. So it's a long way, sometimes you do. And uh, meanwhile, you meet a lot of interesting artists in all fields, which meld together so f so very well. And uh, I might welcome one of uh, uh, my oldest uh, artist friend who is here, Trixie Weiss, who did this wonderful performance yesterday night with the uh, economical glass. Uh, it was funny. It was funny. I was traveling with bands in uh, in Eastern Europe. And then, uh, then of course, you go, it was before the Velvet Revolution, so I was meeting all these, I had an official uh, job for the communists, and then I could go underground and meet all those artists, which was very interesting for me, because in the Netherlands, where I studied on all these schools, it was, it was like everybody had the same background. It was not, it was not interesting. I was... I was interested in how other people were thinking, how other people could give a voice to the voiceless, because this is, I think, one of the most important things of, of the arts. And uh, so uh, I was especially interested in Eastern Europe, because uh, they had no voice, and the I hope there's not a communist here in the... But they were, they were only about the speaking word. And so the music, and the, and the visuals, they were f mostly free, and they could do, so it was a, a big scene. And then that's where I met Trixie, she was studying in Prague with Milan Knizak, you know. And, uh, and then I had my exhibition there, we met, and then uh, suddenly she had a brother, who was a famous uh, a choreographer in Luxembourg, and, uh, well, I was also a dance company, and I had a camera, so I was doing this, this sceneries, a few sceneries for him. And this working together was very nice, and of course I worked with a lot of bands. Uh, my husband, he was tour manager of bands all over Europe, so, and it was all, always, always meeting. They all stayed in our house, so it was big, one big thing. And in the end, in the end, I went to the Rijksakademie, in Amsterdam, which is one of the main interesting. This is the only place where you can really study. You have a place for your own. The uh, best way to keep artists is having an institution like that. Uh, you could say, well, I want to meet Dan Graham, and then they fly over Dan Graham for you. For instance, for having a talk. It was really perfect. I was one of the first uh, for the digital uh, computers. They well, it's not, uh, it's not, it's not about the Rijks Academy, but a place, a common place where artists from all over the world meet is very important. It's, I think, I, I think, yeah, maybe the talk is not about the Rijks Academy, but but Rijks Academy is indeed a very interesting topic because uh, that's something I think we discussed that 
last year um, at a panel talk in Casino Display where uh, where we had a talk uh, with um, young curators in Luxembourg and we all came to the to the same conclusion that something that is really missing uh, is a place for young artists to study or like a uh, like a Reichsakademie uh, it doesn't really maybe we are not ready to have an art university but maybe a format like that could also like a re residency and extended study time could also be a, a, a sol something that maybe one day could propel Luxembourg a little bit more. So what I wanted to ask you is... Um, There's money for that eh, in Europe. Yeah, well... You should go. <laughs> and um, what I wanted to ask uh, you about Reichsakademie is um, how... Uh, was the time at the Rijksakademie linked um, to experiencing Amsterdam? Is that is the Rijksakademie like a little capsule outside the context of the city, or how much is the city actually influencing the whole experience? Well, there are a few answers to give you. <laughs> you want the formal or the informal? I think we want the informal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, well, well. Let's keep it uh, a little bit in between. It's uh, it's very much. Uh, of course, everybody, every students uh, love Amsterdam a lot. You know, uh, there are a lot of clubs. There's a lot of things to do. Uh, there are beautiful museums. I mean, the Van Gogh, the Stedelijk Museum, the I. Uh, Institute for a film museum, and there's so much uh, really nice galleries. So there's a lot, uh, but also the other things. Uh, we have the coffee shops. We have, uh, I mean, everybody comes for that. Um, so it's 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 it's. Um, but the Rijksakademie in its own, it's 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 real a global place, which which uh, you can share, but. Yeah, you can you can actually sleep there if you want. I mean, so it's 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 really a good place. But I must tell you, just just focus on your topic. That uh, there was one period that the, the uh, Stedelijk Museum was closed for restoration, the Van Gogh Museum was closed for restoration, and uh, the Rijksakademie was in a in a bad shape, and there were no no much students around, and then suddenly a lot of Big companies, they, it was not the same Amsterdam, it was not the same atmosphere, because it's always important for, uh, uh, well, the big money catchers, uh, that there is some place to go, some place to meet, some place to, and art is, 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 is also, uh, well, not my type of art, I mean, not the art that I'm making, but it's also very important for industries, around in the city. When there's no art, there's no big industry. That's a really, really, really nice answer. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think you really, really came to the point of our talk. So I would ask Caroline, if you don't mind, maybe you can react to the, to the statement. <laughs> I'm very happy for that because it's really going into what, what I'm trying to, to, to do and what, what actually brought me to Luxembourg because um, including your perspective of being already here and coming back and working here, to come to Luxembourg was, uh, the main decision was taken because of a good fair but because there's all the other options to it that make the good fair a big potential to grow and to bring the art and to underline the existing art and to intensify the cooperation. And you said exchange. I just read it again while you were speaking. I said it says in cultural and the artistic scene of the greater region. I would like to extend it and with the greater region. And I would even like to put the word greater region into a more philosophical context because we have many regions, if you can say that, as humankind living together. This was also reflected in the talk that we had with Atelier van Lieshout about town development and all these levels. Then we spoke about creating a destination. 
A destination implies that we move all together into an, to, a to a direction, into a certain direction. And art is a facilitator for me. I'm not objective because I grew up with that, with, a, with, with an intense dialogue between artists, political positions, even religion, nature, urban life, and all of that. So for me, that's a very normal thing. But I learned that this is not normal for everybody and everywhere in the world, and that if we can, we have to share that. And in my choice, it was fostering and building spaces and communicational grounds where that happens, where art is not only at home, but can, can actually operate also outside of the concrete um, artistic practice. And coming here, this is the discussion that you and me have every time we see each other, a bit like an explosion, it just starts again, um, that it's an automatism that happens when people are together that are linked to art or science with art or even sociology and are interested in the culture. An automatism happens where you think about your society, your surrounding, and how an artist or his work could be placed in that local discourse that then gives energy to the surrounding. That's actually the process that we're doing. And for me, there is actually no difference if we are a fair as a market space. We cannot do it without talks. We cannot do it without the institutions. The institutions can very well live without a fair. But it's also nice when there's a fair that wants to link when there's the market that wants to link to the context and is aware of that, because the market needs the dialogue, every artist knows that, if they're not talked about, if they're not covered in critiques, if they're not written about, then it's much more difficult to anchor. And if we link that more, then it can grow and then it can move and it can, it can take people in. And that's the plan. And I'm very, ha very happy that you bring people to the, not only to the podium, but to town, Anastasia, that help us doing that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Let her go from the Netherlands. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for this, uh, this very complete answer. And I think what is... Um, what you touched upon, the, um, it's interesting, you were reading again uh, our title, or better say the subtitle of this talk, uh, where of course the greater region is, uh, is, is quite prominent and it's interesting, we were talking uh, with uh, Laura uh, before the talk just about that, because greater region in, Fr in French, Grande Région, is, uh, is something that is, uh, that is a, a topic in Luxembourg, in a way. Uh, it's something that we use a lot. We are kind of like positioning ourselves in this, in this region. But actually, uh, you know, it, it is a very limited way of looking at it. Um, basically, what, what most Luxembourgish people understand by Greater Region, I was explaining to Laura, is that um, it's basically goes until st uh, in France until Strasbourg, in Belgium until Brussels, and in Germany until Cologne. That, that is not, I think that is not what I mean by greater region. So um, there, the greater region is, uh, is to, be under, uh, to be understood in a much more philosophical sense, and is to be understood that Yes, our region is great, and uh, it is it is much larger than we think it is. I actually told Laura uh, that uh, uh, for me, uh, especially um, in the in the show that uh, I curated a year ago, uh, at the same time in, in Casino Luxembourg, I actually was speaking about the greater region, and it went until Italy. So I invited artists from Italy, and I was just like, "Yeah, it's a greater region exhibition because, yeah." It, 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 really geographically speaking it is not that far it is it is so easy to travel and and we are only we are we can only benefit by including and not excluding and so that uh, leads uh, to to you laura um how um, yeah maybe yeah, you could introduce as well what you do and how you are experiencing bridging something which is geographically a bit more remote. I would. I wouldn't really speak about very remote or, or remote. I think a bit more remote than maybe our neighboring countries. And how do you experience being here in our region? Yes. Can you hear me? Perfect. Nice to meet you. Thank for thank you for this invitation. It's lovely to be 
in this talk, I'm very honored and privileged to be here. I'm from the Finnish Cultural Institute for the Benelux. Our office is based in Brussels, but we cover um, Belgium and the Netherlands and Luxembourg. So that's, that's our territory, if you want to put it like that. We are part of a um, very loose network of Finnish cultural institutes, mainly in Europe. Uh, we are 16 all together, um, but we're very independent. We're independent foundations and funded by the Ministry of Education and Culture. We have been in the area for 30 years already. I have been here for two years, but I only feel that I have only, you know, scratched surface <laughs> because this region, this Benelux and why not the greater region is very, very rich culturally, like amazing. And I kind of feel almost despair at some point because there are so many great organizations, such a vibrant artistic field that I need to even, like only in visual arts, we cover everything. <laughs> but if, if we talk about visual arts here, it's like amazing, great art schools, great museums, great great art spaces, galleries, fairs, everything. So it's been really, really rewarding for me to get to know the region. I didn't know much in advance. But um, it's always funny uh, because I'm coming from Finland, which is in the Nordic area next to Russian border, a huge country with uh, not so many people. Um, and um, when people mention periphery here, um, even if it's like Belgian periphery, I'm like, hmm, okay, <laughs> because <laughs> Finland, uh, looking from here, is definitely far away. If you want to travel by land, it takes two, yet two days uh, to come by train. Of course, you always have to take plane, but that doesn't mean that Finland is isolated. Uh, many, many artists from the you know 19th century onwards have studied in European art schools in Paris, in in Germany, um, and nowadays many. In, in the Netherlands, uh, in Rijks Academy, many great artists, Finnish artists, contemporary ar artists have, uh, have done their residency over there, and almost every time they end up in Venice Biennale. <laughs> so they represent Finland in the Finnish pavilion at some point, because Rijks Academy is such a great school, and it's amazing. So it's very linked to the Central Europe, even though it's quite far away. Uh, and I think my theory is that when Brexit happened, it's even sort of closer, because in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Luxembourg, people speak English, it's effortless, it's easy to come, uh, people are amazing. So it's very easy for Finnish artists to come here, find gallerists as well, um, and, and attend art schools and, and so on. Maybe one thing uh, I want to mention here, we were talking about art fairs, is that if we think about Helsinki, as an art city, it lacks the art fair. We don't have any art fairs in Finland that, for example, Luxembourg has a great one, absolutely wonderful art fair. We have great museums. We now have a biennial, Helsinki Biennial, with, with its second edi uh, edition this summer, this previous summer, but we don't have a fair. So something is definitely lacking. Uh, and of course, we have to see what we can do about it, but the market is quite under developed also because of that. Um, it's very interesting that you touch upon that because, yeah, first of all, uh, thank you for being here and thank you also because uh, it was actually you that reached out to Cirque Cité and it was you that came uh, to visit us last year and uh, it was a great discovery to see that, that you are there, that you are here to promote Finnish artists, to build the bridges, to, to do the networking, to do all this work, so we are more aware of the Finnish uh, artists here and, uh, and maybe also vice versa, so I think that's great. And you touched upon the fact that, yeah, uh, through schools uh, there is as well a, a big connection. Um, especially to the Netherlands, that's also something I had a lot of Finnish, uh, Finnish uh, colleagues uh, or generally speaking Scandinavian uh, colleagues that were studying with me. Um, I think what is interesting is that you said Helsinki has museums, Helsinki has art schools, it doesn't have a fair. And it's interesting because it's kind of like uh, you can't have everything. So we have a great art fair, 
uh, we have uh, also great institutions, but we don't have a school. So that, again, I think uh, shows that that's why we have to stick together. Because, because it's only with this exchange and it's only by complementing each other that we build a more complete art world, one could say. We had a discussion two nights ago in the casino. Again, our dis explosion when we meet. Um, and we spoke about joining forces. Um, and I talked, thought about that a lot and it just resonated again when, when you on your comment that what we all need to do more is actually what the sometimes too often questioned institutions of the EU are doing maybe too long and too extensively. But we in the cultural world, we actually have to really bridge because what just came to my head is we don't have the education, they don't have a fair, but we have the internet to make it very simple. We talked about in our whole in our whole last days about what this new space again can do for us. And I think sometimes we could have an exchange of a summer school in between countries, between what is going on in Helsinki, we could come in an utopian idea with all our institutions and have and do something in summer here. And because we have a fair, we could maybe have more aims and accesses to develop these ideas with facilitating, with communication, with media, with sponsors, with all of that. And if we start to think like that, even only on the drafting way of meeting, then I think we get to go to new ways without losing where we're coming from. Well, stating summer schools, I'm here with a second hat. I'm a professor of the University of the, of the Arts in Utrecht. And uh, we are also looking for contacts for exchange of students through summer schools or master classes or something like that. So I'm delighted to talk with you about it. <laughs> Super great. Coming back to, to you, Bea. So you just mentioned uh, you, you have been in the Rijksakademie in Amsterdam, but you, you teach uh, as well in Utrecht. Maybe. Um, Maybe a question more specifically about the Netherlands, because I, I always found it quite interesting. Um, for the, yeah, I was living in The Hague, as you know, for, for quite a while. And on the one hand, there was a current um, of people that would never leave uh, the so-called belt. So you would go to Rotterdam and you would go to Amsterdam and then that's it. So there, there, there was there is like this thing, which is like the center. And um, and when I got out of the Netherlands, I uh, discovered that there is so much more because every little city seems to have an absolutely amazing museum. So how how do you experience like or Krola Müller that is like in the middle of nowhere? Um, so how 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 do you experience like let's say the um, topography of of the of the cultural institutions in in the Netherlands? Yes, they are, uh, well, in Groningen we have a very nice art school. We have in Maastricht a very nice art school, also a, a, a master's. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, Zwolle, which is on the, on the east part of the Netherlands, they have a nice art school, Arnhem. So there are a lot of them, a lot of them, but it's true. It's very much the belt, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Utrecht, Amsterdam, Rotterdam. This is this is the main thing. I mean, this is for for students an interesting area to 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 live and to to. I mean, it's a uh, uh, art is a, uh, well, it wouldn't surprise you, but it's about living. <laughs> so it's 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 also secondary things which are important. And of course, in uh, in Eindhoven, well, there is a big scene in Eindhoven also, but it's different from Amsterdam and Rotterdam. They're the leading ones. So it's still very much about these centers, even though like the the other cities seem to have to do the job like twice as good to to be able to put themselves on the map. Well, exactly because students from our uh, university they pre prefer to go to Ghent in Belgium or or to. Sure. That's, oh. I'm sure that's true. And it's, it, it's very interesting for me because the, one of the greatest benefits being here is that you can go everywhere by train and it takes a minute, you know. In Finland, when you go somewhere, it's two hours for the next biggest city. 
So it's completely different situation and I'm, I feel like an agent here somehow because uh, when I go to Netherlands and I'm like, you have to come to Brussels. It's such a great scene and <laughs> great, you know, uh, spaces and galleries and these collectives and, and in Brussels, I'm like, okay, Netherlands, there are some wonderful things and it, it's very lovely and of course Luxembourg. Uh, with, it ar with its art spaces at, at all, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, you can feel it. And of course the Flander Flanders is more part of Netherlands in the sense with the language and, and stuff and Gent and, and Antwerp. So it's absolutely wonderful. And But for me, it's such a benefit to be able to so quickly go from one place to another. And it takes only a day to visit somewhere. Um, so yeah, I, g I know what you mean. Maybe um, maybe to continue with uh, with you, Laura. So um, yeah, you talked about uh, the differences and the similarities with the Finnish context. Um, maybe um, you, I, you probably are more often invited to the Netherlands or or somewhere in Belgium than to Luxembourg. So I think it's your second time here, and it's also your first time discovering the fair. So maybe what is um, what. What was your impression of your visits more specifically to Luxembourg? And do you have maybe already plans or a specific outlook or a specific wish also to address to us, uh, more specifically Caroline and me, uh, you know, the outlook for maybe future? That, that is true. This is my second time here. Um, first time was, yeah, last December. And I found find your art space is absolutely wonderful. Casino is great um, such a wonderful program you have a great museum madame now the fair as said uh, you have such an ambitious future for for that space in very central Luxembourg we also went to uh, trois cl uh, for performative things residences we have worked with before what we wish to probably build here is would be some sort of residency for performative art, art, let's see, but also opportunities for, for of course, Finnish artists to exhibit in Luxembourg. I must say that um, Luxembourg for Finnish or Finland-based artists isn't that well known either. So I think some sort of exchange uh, could be in place. And, and I have to say that, of course, the cultural capital um, project, <laughs> how do you call it, in Esh, um, seemed very interesting as well because in Finland th um, the next Finnish cultural capital will be in 2026 in, in northern Finland, a place called Oulu. So I'm sure there will be some sort of exchanges between that as well. So yes, definitely a lot of potential and um, I wish to visit especially residencies that I'm interested in because those are the ones that Finnish artists always want to go to. And those are the ones that we also want to support. We want to support long-term, um, you know, being somewhere and also building up relationships when being in one place and residences are the perfect opportunity for that, for Finnish artists. When you leave from there, it's nice to be there for a bit longer time. Uh, very great that you bring up residencies because I think that's also something that uh, we haven't had in Luxembourg uh, for a very long time and uh, I, uh, there was Neumünster, that's true, Neumünster uh, has been the pioneer of proposing residencies in Luxembourg, but I'm really happy. I have a lot of artists' friends from, um, even from my, my artist friends from the US that uh, always ask me, where can we, we love Luxembourg so much, where c can we apply to stay here a bit longer? So I'm very happy that, it's especially with Ash, um, there were new spaces like Breda House that opened. So uh, we, I, I think we in Luxembourg also started already actively to experience what it brings to our country to have all of a sudden more international artists that live and work here for a couple of months. That is already a very, very big uh, addition to, to our local scene here. So maybe, yeah, Bea, you touched upon the fact that you and uh, Trixi met in Prague and that it's one of your oldest artist friends. Um, so how does it feel for you to, to come to Luxembourg and exhibit in Luxembourg, you know, after having known Trixie for such a long time? And also maybe a little anecdote. Um, 
when I invited uh, Trixie uh, to the exhibition um, nearly simultaneously as I invited Bea, I actually saw Bea's work in an exhibition about food art in the Tangeli Museum in Basel when I was still working there. And um, I really loved the video and I, and I, I, and I wanted to do a little uh, wink, so a little clown d'oeil to that exhibition that, uh, that was an exhibition that inspired me a lot. So I decided to take one artwork that I saw there and, and bring it to, to our exhibition uh, this year. So I invited Trixie and Bea simultaneously and uh, all of a sudden, uh, without knowing that they know each other, and all of a sudden Trixie was, uh, was, uh, was telling me about, about it and, and how great it is that she's gonna exhibit with a friend. So again, how, how small the world is, we, we kind of start to all understand. So how is it for you, this experience then, to come to Luxembourg? Oh, well, yes, it's always a feast to come to Luxembourg because we, we, we share a lot, of course, obviously. But it was, it was very funny because when Trixie phoned me, she said, well, we have an exhibition together. And I said, no, <laughs> no, that's, no, that's funny, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I knew it before you told me. <laughs> so this was nice. And I must say, I must say it's, it's, uh, I'm very fond of the exhibition. It's very nice, very well done. And I know the casino and I, I love the, uh, the program there and the new museum. It's a it's wonderful place to go to. So it's, ne let me tell you, it's never a waste of time okay. being here. <laughs> so, uh, I think, uh, you know, we're working on it. Uh, we are actively <laughs> working on it, so we are very happy to hear such feedback. Uh, so let's stay with you, maybe. Um, Caroline, you already mentioned that you have a, a, a very international background as well, and you already kind of touched upon the touched upon the motivation to come to Luxembourg. So yes, you, you saw a lot of potential in the in the fair. Um, maybe you can um, you can speak uh, a little bit. Uh, about what, what your experience has been so far as well and, and how maybe, you know, the goods and the bads, <laughs> how, how it was for you to, to come here. What did you expect and how different or similar maybe the experience was? So um, what was very nice is that the inst for me, as I said before, um, the, the art market doesn't work without the discours around and for that we need the institutions and you, you were very kindly always emphasizing us two here and but we had um, a press conference in a in the weeks before the fair in a in an exhibition that emphasizes young luxembourgish artists with all the institutions and that was the moment when i realized that my my wish for what we're doing here comes true because they actually all were there and they actually all came and they came to our morning press conference in the week. You come to a new country, you have ambitious ideas and you have a very short time and a very song, long summer break in Luxembourg. One of the things a German has to get to, used to. <laughs> it's very relaxing, but not if you have a fair a week later in the feeling. <laughs> um, but um, I, will, I will prepare for the next year and I will love it. Um, but that was really wonderful because I saw it's happening and I saw it's being real and everybody came and everybody was very active. And since then we had a very good exchange, the Mudam, the Casino, Konstral, Siakl and others all of a sudden reached out by themselves, not only on what we had as ideas, you could see that it's we're getting we're moving together and this is a very very wonderful thing because it's not given that you come to a to a country that is so together that this together this normal closeness that people have here everybody knows everybody that's what the first thing you hear when you come is that you have to know that we all know each other <laughs> um it can be a bit intimidating in the beginning because you go like i hope there's this one little chair where also then I know the people. And I have to say, I knew them very fast because it was open arms everywhere and curiosity everywhere. And straight and honest words also everywhere. But I like that. So um, that the, is the biggest experience. People that are curious and willing to work for what they say is crucial for what we do. and. 
this was also, I ju we just, we had an idea and everything went off. Everybody just started to do something. And, and we reached a point which you see now, but we reached a map which shows the whole, the whole city and the whole, even the institutions from outside Luxembourg City. And this is just three examples that the people here really are reaching out for their own action and do it, doing it together. And we, I hope we can keep the momentum. What, what is also very interesting is that um, apparently because of the size, and this is another overwhelming thing, um, there's an infectious situation happening, somebody told me, that it's already starting that everybody starts to move differently in their little teams. People get inspired much faster. So it's a bit of, an, of, a, of a ping pong. And sometimes you have the feeling it speeds up a lot. And then you talk to people and then all of a sudden new projects are given and born. And you have to be very careful that you don't do too much, promise too much, dream too much, and have too many conversations because at the end it's a, in Germany we say Wolkneul, like it, it's knit, a knit ball. But there again you have the other positive side that everybody wants to help and they knock on your knee and they say that you shouldn't do, please go there. So it's an overall very balanced experience, but I really would, would like to foster that, that we continue that and that we also again run it a bit in, in the fields that we can add. And we have to ask that nobody is overwhelmed and, and says it when they are. So I think having in, installing a way of con conversing together is important. But there's not so many negative things because we're just at the beginning and I only see open doors so far. So. What you say um, is uh, is uh, very it's very great to hear, and I and and, and it's true that um, maybe the one thing that, uh, that that we have to be careful about is not to overwhelm because uh, because yes, it's 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 really amazing that uh, sometimes you have weeks like this art week where all of a sudden everything is happening everywhere all the time, and uh, for such a small uh, country and such a small population. Uh, some people start to get really frustrated that they cannot be everywhere at the same time. So <laughs> it's uh, it's really interesting how it uh, how overwhelming sometimes it can be, and and also how ambitious sometimes we can think. And all the institutions that you mentioned. Um, I also want to mention this uh, ping pong idea because I think. Uh, Yes, the, uh, it, it, I actually experienced something amazing, I think, this year, and that's how the institutions started really to work together. Like uh, Casino and, and uh, Konstal Esch, they had a project together, or they were really in a discussion about uh, uh, com yeah, communal programming. Um, and then, of course, your uh, collab idea, which is something very simple. So there is a there is a lounge, uh, and um, there is a collab lounge here at the uh, fair, which is a which is a room uh, where all the institutions, uh, all the partners, uh, worked on it together, worked on it together to show something to to make it basically to to make it into a into a nice space, and. Um, Call for that, let's say, or the the, the uh, was was quite came quite late, and I was surprised how reactive everybody was all of a sudden. You know, sometimes it can work. You know, I, at that moment I really thought you are also doing something, and w w with that because, you know, with this uh, question that came very late. Okay, what do you wa do you want to participate? What can you do? What can you exhibit there? What can you put there? Can you put books? Can you put artworks? Can you? Uh, how can we do this space together? And I, I never saw such a reactivity, I think, in Luxembourg before. Everybody wanted to be there. As That's well. a great compliment, but I have to say, and, and you will see that also with your work when you travel so far, and it's always a question of the perspective, and you go to other cultures, and I, I worked with Africans, I worked with Russians, I worked in other countries, and what I learned is that if you try to go back to the normal, and you just say, Trixie, I have a space, I saw you in the exhibition of Anastasia. Would you come to the fair? I mean, you can sit there and say, this is a 
quite important artist for Luxembourg and visibility in the world is also given. She has a high intellectual discourse already. There are institutions like you all around. There's, you know, that's, that's the field. There's a lot of this going on in our world. But if you say, Trixie, I need help. I like what you do. I met you, I like you. Would you come to my fair? That's as simple as it is. And then you need to get the money and then it's done. Actually, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And sometimes I think that's a great example because sometimes you actually need to go a bit further to come together. I have an example from Finland. Finland was chosen, I don't remember anymore why, but chosen to be a focus country for Arco Art Fair in Madrid uh, 2014. And it sort of came to <laughs> our lab. I was working in Frame Contemporary Art Finland at that time. And they were like, yeah, we need kind of 12 ca galleries from Finland to participate. And we were like, there are no 12 galleries, you know, like this sort of, oh no, what should be, you know, it's a small, it's a small field. So yeah, but w they accepted like emerging galleries as well. And, and then it had this crazy, wonderful glass trip feeling to go to Madrid after this half of year, very intensive period. And you could, you know, meet your Finnish colleagues and be <laughs> there in Madrid and talk and do something together. And with Spanish, they're wonderful. So actually you have to sometimes and that's why I love I love these focus, you know, countries thing in at uh, art fairs. I think they're great because they're bringing also the, especially the areas where the market is a bit m underdeveloped together to do something for the greater good. And think about how is our, you know, scene uh, in Helsinki or somewhere. And it's even it's like more than just the focus thing somewhere, but it's really beneficial for the the city or the country. Okay. <laughs> I have, I want to emphasize one thing that's very important for me, um, is that I think we in the cultural world and sometimes especially in the contemporary art discourse, when it gets a bit more academically only institutional driven, we are, I don't know if we're really still afraid in 2023, but um, we are very, very careful with other important areas of that hold and run and enable our societies, which is the economic part, which is the political shareholders and all of that. And yes, I am very grateful for the people that help us, but that's not what I'm saying. I think it gets really interesting when we start to dare to get into the dialogue with embassies, um, with, and yes, with embassies, with even with parties sometimes with governments, with co big companies. And when we, when, we, when we suggest them things, there was a discussion in Cologne about, about the big industry, I think it was two years ago, that the big industry is never really taking a moral position in the press or anything at a dinner with artists, with museum directors, with somebody from the, from the New Philharmonie in Hamburg. And three weeks later, one of the biggest CEOs in the pharma industry wrote an article, and he was the only one, the only one that we've ever seen in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung about the about the um, responsibility that the big leaders in the world and econo economy have. And he stated his position, and it was the first for first time since the fall of the wall that somebody from the economic world of that power said something on that level. And it came from a conversation with artists and musicians and philosophers that he was inspired. And nobody copied him, which was sad. But I think this is also something that we can do as institutions and also we have a responsibility as also a market platform. And the people that are sitting here, sorry to point, but I think that's important. And it happens a lot in the Netherlands, I think, since I think that's why the Netherlands also have been very innovation driving because there was never, in my anticipation, there was never this, this uh, perception, there was never this wall so strict. And I think that's something that we have as a responsibility to emphasize and drive and to dare because what we have, we have spaces and we can just get them out and, and talk with them. And that helps us as institutions at the end also in a way, or you as institutions and me as fair with programming space, let's put it like that. I think that's very important that we continue that also. Political voice is very important. Yes. Very important. And we cannot nowadays cut. Nowadays and ever, but yeah. nowadays it's very important. And we cannot cut out the economy, it's impossible. 
because they are running a lot of these developments in the same, in this, with the same emphasis. And they're not the enemy as long as we don't see them as the enemy. Well. I'm, I'm, I said there, there's a lot, but we, a lot. we can now lot. start there's to count, but if yeah. we do that, yeah. then we, you know, and how we run that dialogue, well, that's I think is that's super important. important. Yeah, that's very and important. And that, I think, is a very big advantage of Luxembourg, because here, when I have a question, I pick up the phone, the cultural ministry is actually, I'm one person away, if not accidentally, I have, him on the I have them on the phone. <laughs> And that's a big advantage to okay. exercise these dialogues also. And the Netherlands, well, uh, internationally, a lot of artists are working together with scientists, with philosophers. Uh, they're making their own projects, uh, uh, having uh, for rights, uh, animal rights, things like that. And uh, now for free Palestine or whatever. Uh, so it's a very huge dialogue. And I think what you said, uh, Caroline, I think... Um, it's very inspiring and uh, it's really about how we own this dialogue. It's like you said, it's, it's about not being afraid and, uh, you know, this mentality of there is only, you know, if you open up a dialogue, uh, there is only something to be gained. Even if it's, it's going to turn into something where you say, okay, that's not for, we, we cannot work together and this is not happening, but uh, at least you, you owned it and you, and you were open enough to not be afraid, to not close ourselves into our cultural shell and say, okay, we are this, uh, you know, we are this um, world, this, you know, intellectual uh, world and we, we operate separately from the rest because that's not true. You know, Luxembourg as a destination, again, is, uh, you know, we, we might dream and we might work uh, in all of the institutions, Casino and, and, and Mudam, of course, very important cultural institutions. We might work on the, uh, and you, of course, with the art fair, uh, and you, sa you, you, you said this uh, wor word over and over again, cultural destination. We might work on it and then we will get there, I hope. But uh, Luxembourg is also a financial destination, and we cannot, we cannot, and especially here with this fair, we cannot close our eyes on it. So um, yeah, that's really important what you said. So um, thank you very much again uh, for being here, Laura. I actually just has, have been thinking about the fact again how how close we are all, uh, all are and how small of a world this is. Uh, that uh, we actually worked to like w worked together without knowing each other when uh, Karolina Markiewicz and Pascal Piron were having their exhibition at the casino and I was still working there. Um, uh, we actually invited a Finnish artist, a Finnish filmmaker, Maya Blafield, to uh, show uh, a movie and to participate in a discussion. And you were the, at, back then still at Frame, and, and Frame Finland uh, is a great institution that um, that helps. Uh, artists when they want to travel, when they are invited by a, by a, an European or, or an international institution to show their work. Uh, Frame Finland was always there with financial help, so that's actually how we how we exchanged emails without without having a face on the person. And then it was so nice to to see you back, uh, or to see you and to meet you. So uh, thank you very much for for having been here with us today. Thank you so much, Bea. Thank you for your particip wonderful participation in the exhibition. Thank you for being here, for coming to Luxembourg, and now the second time uh, since we know each other. And thank you, Caroline, for your vision, for your work, and for bringing us all a bit closer together. Thank you so much. Thank you for that.